the project using the company's uh, custom json based domain specific language or jdsl jake began an svn checkout and long story short it took two days to complete his co-worker scott told him oh that's normal just play solitaire or something until it finishes after a couple days of spelunking through the code base and not finding even a single code comment, Jake could make no sense of what he was seeing. Oh, you just don't get it, he began. J, j Diesel was written by Tom. He's a super genius and wrote a j Diesel himself. So basically that customer's JSON is just metadata used to put together the customer's class. So how do I run it? He asked. Scott laughed. You wouldn't want to just run it. It takes a couple of days for new deployments to finish starting up. J Diesel can be a little slow, but it's really powerful. Really powerful. Like I said, Tom is a genius. So walk me through this metadata file. What does it do? Scott laughed again. This is the genius part. See here where it says class? Uh-huh. Well, that's the class name. Now see down here where it says function? Yeah, those are the subversion links to all the functions that make up the class. Tom's, Tom's a f genius. <laughs> so you have this customers.json file with customers.js. The JSON file is the metadata and the JSON file has all the code. So the list of functions in the JSON file tells J Diesel to look up those revisions of the JS file to find what functions are available. In this case, the actual code is in revision and so on. Each revision of customer's JS has just one function. So to add functions, all you have to do is check out your new code, update the JSON metadata file with the new revisions. Whenever something makes a function call on a customer object, J Diesel uses a list of function revisions to check out all the actual function until it finds a match. Like I said, Tom's a genius. <laughs> Jake slowly began to understand the system, checking out multiple revisions of a file so he could piece together and see what was going on at runtime. And soon he realized it was merely a web portal to allow customers to update their personal information. But thanks to the complexity of Jade Diesel, it took days to do coding work that should only take minutes. He went through all the code, still familiarizing himself with it. He started checking in code comments to help him and his coworkers map together the convoluted mess. He even fixed a few obvious bugs he found just by reading the code. He did this one class at a time. And by the end of the week, he had updated and checked in all the JSON meta files to use a new function revisions. Monday morning, he showed up to a virtual firestorm. Everyone was a panic. Something broke with J Diesel, and our customer's database got scrambled. Are you Jake, the new guy? Yes, he answered carefully. I'm Tom. You broke J Diesel. Uh, what now? Jake had only been looking at the customer portal. How could he have caused any problems? You broke Jake Diesel! He screamed, I'm reporting you to the bosses and having you fired. Tell us what you did to Jake Diesel. I don't think I did anything, Jake answered. I don't even know how to deploy it. You made a few commits to subversion! Uh, yeah, well, I added a few code comments trying to. You can't use comments and Jake Diesel, Tom shouted. That's what broke it! I haven't added comment support to J Diesel, so the runtime executes comments like normal code. You must have added the database updates and some comments. <laughs> no, no, it can't be real. It cannot be actually real. That's not even possible. Yeah, well, I put a couple short syntax examples in a comment to clarify. Tom burst to his feet. I knew it. You broke it. He turned to face the VPs. I can't deal with coders who don't understand the system. You'll either fire Jake or I quit. And he stormed out of the room. The VPs turned to the HR representative and talked as if Jake wasn't even in the room. I think our course of action is pretty clear. Tom's a programming virtuoso and our best resource. And Jake did delete the database. We have to fire Jake. And so Jake moved on to greener pastures, much greener pastures, ones where production systems didn't d do dozens of SVN file checkouts for each function call at runtime. <laughs> oh my goodness, Tom is a genius. One, where production systems don't automatically use the latest trunk. And one that didn't come uh, to a complete standstill because a newbie checked in a code comment. This cannot be real. I just, I have to, I, I have to believe this is not real. All right. The name is the primogen.